Hello and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. In today's video we have a 1v1 between Mitfit and the Sabotai. Uh, we've also not looked at this map before so it will be interesting to see how both players uh, play differently. We have a interesting difference here between start positions. On the left we have Sabotai who has started in the bottom left so uh, side of the map. Um, not directly bottom. Uh, but just above the south spawn. Whereas Mitvit has spawned in roughly the same location on his side, but as the map is mirrored uh, diagonally, it does mean that they have different resources to start off with. Mitvit has a two mech spawn uh, with three mechs to his north and south, whereas Sabotai does have a hill to his south, so he's going to be limited as to what movement he can do to get those three mexes. Um, and his expansion options to the north are nowhere near as good as Mitbit's options. It does mean, however, though, that Sabotai has the most direct path to Mitbit's base, um, where there is a cliff directly outside of it. So it'll be interesting to see how the bots will be able to path over these hills which as Mitbit is building a grunt we can see that there is some red in the pathing there so it may be that they won't be able to get up there um and that is not the case they can definitely path over that hill okay so the terrain isn't really going to cause Mitbit a problem then as we just check the transversibility for the ticks here and we can see they can pretty much reach anything what about the engineers here and the engineers are not going to be able to go up the south cliff where mitfit is however they will be able to go up the hill next to sabotai so the four mexes to sabotai's direct south which are now being circled uh, will actually be able to be captured by sabotai so as we zoom out here, we can see Mitbit has gone Core and Sabotai has gone Armada. And we see some ticks here about to get some early harass damage on Mitbit. Probably get one mex, I think. The other tick is not really going to do anything. It does mean that Mitbit's base has been found. This last tick that's remaining here... He's probably not going to get any expansion mechs other than the one that he got, which is fine. He's still a little bit ahead of Mitbit here. And there we go. We see it get killed. Um, a bunch more ticks coming out from Sabotai. Meanwhile, Mitbit is searching for him, uh, but hasn't found him yet. He has gone to the spawn, uh, which is the same as his, and realizes that Sabotite is not there. Sabotite now transitioning over to pawns. Uh, yet to leave his base, though. Um, he is still only running on three metal extractors, whereas Mitvit is already building his sixth metal extractor now. He's also going for energy converters, and as we can see, although it doesn't look like a lot, uh, this will start adding up quickly. Sabotai now starting to expand, sending a double engineer out to build a radar on the hill in front of him. That's a good place for it. And the double engineer is pushing for the south side middle uh, mech spot here where there is another four mechs. Sabotai can get control of the middle at the bottom. Uh, the or just south of his base will be basically protected. So these engineers are probably about to get killed by this grunt unless he moves some units up to assist. Sabotai hasn't noticed yet. Now he has. As he pulls the engineers back he won't lose any of those, and that grunt will also get killed. And at the same time, we see a nice push in here from Sabotai. There is laser towers there to defend, so I don't know if he's quite got enough to cause much of an issue. Uh, 
Um, right outside of Sabotage Base, though, is a big group of grunts. Six of them, to be precise. Viv is paying attention. He will move them out of the way, but as he's more focused on his base, all of the ones outside are gone. Meanwhile, Sabotage doing a great job at harassing Mitvit's back line here. Probably going to get an engineer. That engineer's got nowhere to go. And that's gone. There's not much more he's going to be able to do with those pawns. Unless Mitvit moves them all into one place, which means he may get this metal extractor. Yes, he does. Very well played by Sabotai there, splitting up his forces. This tick at this uh, triple mex at the top is going to basically spot this open expansion from uh, Mitvit here. Meanwhile, Sabotai is still behind on economy at this point. Um, still behind on metal extractors substantially. Whether he'll be able to take the map control enough to make up for this, we will see. This tick here, doing the god's work, killing that engineer all on his own. And gets a very high level one. And again, Sabotai gets round with a bunch of pawns. Probably just going to get degunned. Yep. That is a... Bit of a big loss there for Sabotai, but he is getting some economy damage to make up for it. Don't think he'll get more than that. Did very well though, considering he also got two metal extractors to the north of Mitvit's base. Sabotai doing very, very well here with the early harass. Uh, Mitvit struggling to cope. However, the naked expansion to the north of Sabotai is about to get killed by one very low-level grunt unless Sabotai uses some of his forces to go and secure that front. Now, one thing to note between the two matchups here is that grunts obviously use laser weapons, whereas pawns use the ballistic weapons, plasma weapons. This, <coughs> this does mean that Mitvit's uh, uh, grunts have longer range than the pawns here. Uh, but that does mean that Mitvit has to be very micro-intensive in order to make the most out of this. Uh, we see Sabotai in a bit of a shortage of units here. He's got a lot of ticks to the north. Um, but that's not really going to matter if Mitvit just walks into his base and destroys all of his economy. And we here we see a use of the armed exploiters. Don't see them very often. Oh dear, and here we see Sabotai's forces pushing directly into Sabotai's base. Radar's gone. He is about to be surrounded. Mifit needs to make a move for these units, otherwise he's gonna lose them again. They are now surrounded. A big waste of uh, units there by Mitvit. Uptai needs to chase them down now. Otherwise, he's going to have to a lot of cleaning up to do. Don't think those units are going to close the range in time. And this grunt is probably going to get some eco damage done here. Only one metal extractor though. He would have kept that unit moving. He would have been able to get a lot more. Meanwhile, as we zoom out the map here, we can see that Sabotai did indeed get control of this bottom section here. No one has gotten control of the north side of the map. However, the actual middle center of the map is very open right now. A lot of go uh, to and fro is going on. As we look at the economy... It's very similar right now with both players around the 22. Ooh, Sabotage just jumped up to 27 uh, as he's got an additional metal extractor built. We see two engineers dying from uh, Mitfit as they walk right into Sabotage uh, NLTs there on the south side of the map. We also see a vehicle transition here from Mitvit. 
We'll see how that is going to play into the game. First construction turret now up from Sepatai as he is using his commander to build winds. This is a very high wind map, 15 wind max. It's uh, pretty good. Surprisingly, not seeing any form of uh, rocket bots is that we need the terrain moving here. As, uh, rocket bots are too slow. And uh, both players need to be able to react to what is in front of them in order to move forward. But instead of rocket bots, we are seeing some pounders come out from Mitbit. Now, these are perfect tanks to deal with pawns or grunts. Um, they have a large impulse weapon, uh, which is still a plasma based weapon. But uh, impulse is basically the game's way of deciding how much uh, a hit moves something. So uh, these weapons will cause a, a bit of knockback to the enemy units, keeping the pawns at bay. Uh, this is a big force coming towards Sabotai now, though. He doesn't have any units here to defend. He's tried to rush an LLT up. This is not looking good for Sabotai. He should have really probably built more than one LLT here. Surprisingly, Mitvit does not continue the push. He's going to try and go over the hill here instead to go round those laser towers. Which does succeed. This is probably going to mean a big chunk of wind dead for Sabotai. Uh, there is a bit of friendly fire going on here from the explosions of the windmills. Uh, but now that he's keeping them at range, uh, Sabotai has not reacted quick enough to deal with that. This means Sabotai is probably going to lose four extra metal extractors as well as the two in his base. As, long as, as well as a bunch of wind. Uh, this is not looking good for Sabotai. Surprisingly though, Mitvit's grunt was too close to the metal extractor and when the metal extractor blew up, it actually caused the grunt to die. And here we see the tanks coming out. Artillery as well, which is going to cause the LLTs to basically become useless at this point. Sabotai needs to switch up his game, bring something out that's going to be able to deal with those. He is just going for quantity over quality, though, it does seem. We have four additional grunts up there as well, but we see a big force clashing here. They did manage to get the artillery, though. Well done on that trade. And here we see another push from Mitfit as he tries to get round. One's doing a good job at closing in. Mitfit not reacting quick enough to the grunts. Horns, rather. And here we see the knockback in effect. But one tank is not enough for that many pawns. So as we zoom out quickly, uh, check the stats here. We can see that the main issue here is metal produced. Both players are very close with Sabotai surprisingly um, ahead. Um, by a short amount here. Um, basically ahead by about 700 metal, which is not too much. Um, energy produced is actually surprisingly energy produced is Sabotai's way ahead by about 80k, but he is excessed 80k so far, so not too good. And there's a lot of fronts here to contend with. Mitfit's used his commander to push very far forward. Going straight down the middle. Unfortunately, Sabotai doesn't look like he's going to be able to contend this for much longer. Getting attacked on all sides here, but Sabotai does have more map control in a way. But well, we might be able to see a chain here of these energy converters. No, he instead goes for all the wins. Sabotai again <laughs> with uh, nothing to react to that as he loses the metal extract to the south side of his base for another time. Uh, and we see a large group of tanks pushing forward now. 
Samurai still with nothing to deal with these tanks. No, don't know what his plan is. He's also losing a large amount of wind. This vehicle transition really paying off for Mitfit now. As we zoom in, we see the artillery getting taken out. Almost. Not quite enough here. Now, he does have a large amount of infantry. He is seeming to throw everything at this, even the resbots. Got a large group at the bottom here, Sabatai, not doing anything with it, letting these tanks get away. But Mifit's coming up with his commander and a new reinforcement wave of grunts. Is Sabatai going to be able to hold this off? Well, I don't know. It's looking very dicey. Sabatai's trying to resurrect units in the middle of the fight. Trying to give him some reinforcements. He is pumping out units at a ridiculous rate. Oh, looks like he was going for a commander push there instead to kill the commander off instead of dealing with the tanks. Does have forces coming from behind. The D-gun misses. Pawn's actually now going for the commander. Mifit in trouble here if he doesn't clean this up quickly. Midfit low on health, 20%, 10%. Midfit is dead. Well played there. Well played at all. Midfit risking his commander right on the front line here, thinking they had enough, but in the end, not enough forces there to deal with the sheer amount of pawns coming out from Sabotai. Uh, well played, both players. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time.